Biobalance HealthCast episode 183, TA65, CVAC, cryotherapy, and DNA engineering. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. This week, Kathy and I are going to continue a conversation that we started last week about an article that we read in the Men's Journal, the August edition uh, of this year, of last year. Uh, and the article is entitled, <clears throat> Building the New Super Athlete, How Medical Technology is Reengineering the Human Body for Optimal and Mostly Legal Performance. And last week, we talked about the, the themes of the article being the research that's being done and the regulatory questions that are raised among uh, high-performance level athletes, whether they're professional or amateur, uh, about fairness and equity in the competition for purists and the serendipitous effects of their focusing on these new techniques and avenues and how that ripples out to the general population. Mm -hmm. And and last week, uh, if you didn't have an opportunity, you want to go back and check that podcast, we talked about stem cell uh, mm -hmm. research that's being done mm -hmm. and, and ways that that's being used now to help people Autologous that aren't Autologous stem athletes. cells, our own stem cells. Yes. Not, no, nowhere in here is fetal stem cells. This is our own stem cells. Yes, yes, not fetal. Uh, and we talked about biofeedback and the, the growth in that, that technology and the expertise and the refining of ways that athletes use biofeedback technologies. And, and we were talking off camera. I remember teaching high school psychology 20 years ago, and the hot new thing that I was teaching about was biofeedback <laughs> technology. And it was rare and unavailable and expensive, and it was only in, like, university research labs. Mm -hmm. And Kathy made the point that now you can download free apps that do biofeedback training for brainwave length and meditation and relaxation mm -hmm. on your smartphone. So we've come that far <laughs> that now it's an everyday thing that convenient. lots of people know about. Right. Yeah, Just and, put and so, your earphones in and you can have more energy or you yeah. can fall asleep. It's awesome. It's amazing. So, so that's what we talked about then. We ran out of time. And so this week we're going to come back and talk about three other things or four other things that are discussed in the article, some of which are still where biofeedback was 20 some odd years mm -hmm. ago, they're pretty far out on the curve that <clears throat> most people wouldn't know about or have access to. Mm -hmm. But if they work and if they continue to be explored, the price will come down, the knowledge will spread, the availability will come down, and people then have mm -hmm. to say, was well, this something I want to try? Or is this mm -hmm. something that I can try? Will it be regulated out of existence? Right. Uh, yeah. So, so we want to start with uh, something called uh, TA65, which has to do with longer chromosomes. And, and as a man, of course, I've always believed size matters. You guys have one short chromosome. Remember that. We have more, chromo we have more chromosome matter than you do Yeah. in every cell. Well, then you, gives must, us that you must win edge. by definition. <laughs> but but uh, TA65 was uh, discovered and a Nobel Prize was, prize was given for it. Mm -hmm. And it is... Um, from an herb, but it is astragalus. 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 It's a Chinese herb. From China. And let me tell you, the herb itself, yeah. ick, ick, stinks, smells bad, tastes bad, but they've taken out the active ingredient and right. made it into a pill. So, um, and I don't advise taking astragalus because you would have to take so much of it to get the amount that you would need yeah. that that wouldn't help. But here's, here's what it does. We all have chromosomes and they stay the same size, but they, they each have a tail on them. And when I was in medical school, and even past that at different conferences, I was told that that tail did nothing. It was just extra stuff. Well, I've not ever really <laughs> understood. If we don't know what it does, we say it doesn't do anything. That, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So most of the things in the human body do something, or they wouldn't be there. Yeah. But they, these have the effect of... The longer the tail, you're born with, with long tails on your, on your uh, chromosomes. And as you get older, the tails get shorter. Okay? The monkeys have no tails in Zamboanga. <laughs> Their chromosomes do. <laughs> Their chromosomes do. Okay. But they have the same issue. So as we get older, our, our, the tails of our chromosomes get shorter. Now, some people's tails of their chromosomes start out shorter. So what happens when they get really short is you get cancer. Your cells start malfunctioning. 
they start succumbing to abnormal aspects in your body. Your immune system drops. You get fatigued. All of the things that we kind of look at with aging. So it's not a hormonal thing like what I deal with every day, which is hormones help stimulate all the activities of, of the body on a uh, organ level. This is on a cellular level. So the, the length of your chromosome can be measured now, and you can have that tested. And if it's really short, shorter than it should be for your age, then you are more at risk for diseases. And if it's longer, then you either by God's grace or by or by taking good care of yourself and exercising and not smoking and, good and genetics. yeah and Pick, doing right everything parents. right picking yeah. the right parents that that you have a longer tail on the chromosome so you're going to have a longer health span okay, okay? not lifespan and, but and it may be lifespan but longer health span right so what TA65 does is it makes the tails longer it grows them yeah it's like reverse aging Wow. And it's on a cellular level. It's not something that you could tell three months after somebody started taking it. Oh, this guy looks like he's been taking TA-65. So, so if they take it three months, six months, a year, do they, do they have to take it forever or do, do they make them longer and then that's good and, they're to, and they can stop? If you if you want to maintain the length uh -huh. of the, of the uh, tails, of the tail. you have, it's called a telomer. Not a tail, but telomer is telomer. what it's called. Right. If you want to maintain the length, you have to keep taking it. If, in other words, the minute you stop, it may have gotten longer, but time it makes will start it shorter. To wear away. Right. Okay. And it's like tread on the tire. Right. You can get a retread yeah. if you take the the TA sixty five. That's right. <coughs> so, but it takes a long time to get. I mean, it takes years to actually make the tail significantly longer. Right. But many people who have cancers, this helps people with cancers. It stimulates their immune system. It helps prevent the cells from, the cancer cells from growing, but it allows the other cells to grow. And it is not a, everybody thought it would be a danger to cancer cells. They'd live longer, but it doesn't do that. So it actually helps you prevent cancer. Your immune system is the active um, ingredient in that it stimulates your immune system mm -hmm. to kill cancer cells and to kill cancer. So in that way, you have immune superiority if you take this, mm -hmm. and if you had cancer, you would take three times the dose of somebody just taking it for prevention or to make the telomeres longer. So there is a dose, um, a, a dose involved in this, and there is also uh, a longevity of taking it. Now we, I learned about this in October or November when I went to the AMMG convent conference, mm -hmm. and we were trained about telomeres and about TA65. And um, I put several people on it. I brought, I bought a number of bottles of TA65. It's not a prescription. It's over the counter. And um, what happened was I put my husband and you and yeah, me and somebody pigs. else yeah. on it. And um, I was sick once this winter, but not very sick. But I've had a pretty good immune system all winter. But my, I'm not sure if that's a good test or not. My only sickness is mental. <laughs> yeah, well, we knew that before. <laughs> anyway, that's not going to get better on this. Yeah, not, so, not with a long And certainly color. not with you. Yeah. And so uh, the TA65 is an option for people who are looking for longevity and a healthy longevity. But and to I also, avoid cancer. And to avoid cancer. And my thing is testosterone helps that too, but in a whole different way. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm obviously because using both. Because they both impact both. the immune system. Yes, but on a different level. Right. So this is one of the ways that we can physiologically change our destiny. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I don't, there are no side effects that I've experienced, you have, or John has. So I assume that uh, these are things that. Well, and then you get those arguments about, well, change your destiny. You're playing God. And, and if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. And my response to that is you wear shoes, you wear glasses. Yeah. My yeah. response is you take medications. You take, yeah. You're sick, exactly. you go to the doctor. I guess that would only be true for Scienti or Scientology. No, not Scientologists. The the Church of Scient of the Christian Jehovah Church. Witness. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So the, if you reject Mary it all, Baker, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, if you reject all all medicine, then okay, then don't play Christ, with it. Christian scientists and Jehovah. That's right. Some that's aspects right. of Jehovah Witness. So that's thank you. So. Um, 
It's not helping me think, obviously. <laughs> so, so the uh, TA-65 is something that is very new and is something that you'll be hearing more about and that people will be using to improve their athletic ability. And, and many of these young people have noticed that it has really helped them. But I, I contend that their telomeres are being, are being beaten down quicker because they are sustaining so much excessive exercise and trauma. And I mean, most of these are contact sports. I mean, except for maybe golf, almost everything can be a contact sport that we watch on television. Right. So they are using up by and aging themselves quicker. But it's a new enough quicker. thing. The data hasn't come in. And so they've we don't done, know well, if Well, they've done a lot of studies on it. They have for, done for the studies longevity for the longevity. And the cancer, but not right. for other enhancing factors. No, but in this article, they've interviewed several people who were athletes, and they right. thought that it helped with their muscle mass and with their immune system and healing. Mm -hmm. And so they've been – and, Faster I, bounce and I bet they're taking a much higher dose than what – everybody else would be taking just as prevention but they're yeah. younger too right. they'll notice it faster yeah so yeah. so that's so that's a nuance that you may want to think about or look into so another thing that's being used by athletes to improve their reload capacity mm -hmm. uh, when you when you have a, a stressful competitive match and you need to go back out the next day and do it again, mm -hmm. like like the the uh, Wimbledon. bicycle racing or Wimbledon or, Wimbledon. or, or what have you, mm -hmm. is they're using hyperbaric chambers, uh, just mm -hmm. like they used to put people in who uh, were divers and who'd come up too fast uh, and didn't get all the nitrogen out of their body. They were going to get the bends. They put them in a, an atmosphere chamber mm -hmm. and reduce the atmospheric pressure. Uh, and, they and then would, bring them up slowly. And they'd also put oxygen in there to right. give you a lot of oxygen. So now athletes are and, and researchers are using these chambers. And they put you in one of these chambers, and they take the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure. They play with it. They go from sea level up to 22,000 feet mm -hmm. and back to sea level with like 400 uh, shift points or plateau points between sea level and 22,000. And they do a 20-minute cycling up and down, mm -hmm. rapid cycling of those pressure changes. And the theory is that it sort of like squeezes and releases your body and all the pores and cells to force the metabolic rate to increase and have it push the toxins and poisons out of the cellular structure itself. Right. And so it like cleanses you and gives you more energy when you come out, you're rejuvenated. So if you've ever had like uh, lactose related exhaustion, like if you've ridden a bike or run or yeah, played tennis. Yeah, collects in your you know, it collects in, your, in your joints and mm -hmm. muscles and stuff. That this would flush that system out. And you mm -hmm. can come back out and be rejuvenated. But then without, have, it would be in your system. It would be in your bloodstream. So then to get rid of the toxins, you'd have to flush yourself with water. Okay. Because otherwise it's just going to go right back, back in, in. Settle back down. Right. So you have to flush it out of your system. And that means water. Okay. Because it has to get out your kidneys. Okay. So do they use that while they're in the pod, or do they no, come out of the pod? No, afterwards. Okay. So they're saying a 20-minute yo-yo session <laughs> of raising and dropping the, the pressure, air pressure, has a beneficial outcome, but you still need mm -hmm. to flush the system. Mm -hmm. You always, I mean, if you're going to mobilize, um, I mean, it's like cleansing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to mobilize all your toxins, you need to get it out. So mobilizing is one thing, cleansing is another, and, and the best way to cleanse is water. So one is breaking them loose, and the other is mm -hmm. flushing them away. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then an additional thing that uh, I've never heard of, but you said actually your daughter, who's a physician, mm -hmm. has been talking to you about mm -hmm. some of this, is us using uh, another chamber uh, that's a hyper-cooled chamber. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like an extrapolation of... of uh, giving you an ice water bath in a, in a gym if mm -hmm. you've had a knee injury or something. Uh, and they reduce, the using liquid nitrogen, they reduce the temperature in this chamber down to minus 250 degrees mm -hmm. for three minutes. And you're on a bike. You're you, riding on a bike. You're riding a bike in this chamber. And you're naked because mm -hmm. there, there was in the article it says <laughs> one guy forgot to take his socks off. And when they <laughs> dropped the temperature that far, the socks froze on his feet, and he got frostbite and was not able to compete. <laughs> so and then what happens to your toes? I mean, that makes no sense because then your toes would have frostbite. I'm just saying I don't get that in, part. Okay. In the article, that, I'll have to look that's into what that. they said happened. Yeah. So I'm but I, assuming, that's the part I didn't get. 
I'm, I'm assuming that that means you have to be naked in this chamber for this to happen. While you're actually but he says it's different than <laughs> being in super cooled water mm -hmm. because the atmosphere, the vapor that you're in is super cooled and it chills your whole body down quickly, but you don't freeze. You don't get frozen points or flash points. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah. So, but so it I'm also, guessing the vapor is it also brings out salts. your toxins. Right. You also have to flush your toxins. And one of the ways to get your um, to get toxins out of your body is to exercise. Okay. So that's also helping you while you're, while you're, riding, while you're riding the bike. All right. So that's really good. I mean, they've been in training, you know, in um, in the gym. They've been and the trainers have been using ice water forever. Yeah. You yeah, know, or ice, the packs. ice packs or right. but ice water to to like give the body a shock. And it reduces inflammation generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so a lot of those injuries and soreness and achiness and so on come from swelling and inflammation. Mm -hmm. That's right. And some they had some people with autoimmune disorders right. who were using this to actually help their autoimmune disorders and decrease inflammation. And they said it was very successful. It was as successful as, as the uh, medication was. Wow. So that is a, that's an advance. And that would be something... That maybe in the future it's still really experimental. It's very it's very early, and now it's just used as as a technique to lose weight and be healthy and cleanse. But but many of these things actually become medical treatments and have real I, real real in the sense of quantifiable beneficial applications for specific problems. Right, just like so, a medication would. Just like a medication would. So and then of course which which brings us to this next one, which is fascinating to me because mm -hmm. it, it may have uh, a positive and relevant in Pact on MS. Yes. Uh, and it has to do with DNA gene therapy. Yeah. And perhaps you should take that one because I don't know well, anything about it. <laughs> DNA gene therapy is slicing a, splicing a snip of genetics. Is that like out recombinant DNA? When, when they take a piece and move it around or add something to it? Recombinant DNA is not from you. Okay. This, it would be by taking. But they would have to create the DNA somewhere, so that's yes, that's recombinant. I'm sorry, I didn't go back that far. But taking the, you should always ask me those questions first before okay, I'm we, sorry. Well, before I'm sorry. we get before we camera. start. Yeah, before we get <laughs> my, my bad. I, then I have to think too hard. <laughs> so they they take a, a snip of recombinant DNA and, and place it into cells that are going to multiply. In so, a virus. They put they take, it in a, in a yeah, virus, they, according to the article. That are going to the cells. Yeah. Right. And then they multiply after that with this new DNA. So it's a post... I honestly don't know exactly how this works, and this doesn't explain exactly how it works, but it's like magic to me to actually be able to infect someone with the right virus that could treat their genetic like risk for breast cancer or their like the BRCA1 and 2 genes or... As I understood the article, it said they put it in your system and then what they've attached to this mm -hmm. virus Stays gets absorbed there. in your regular cells and begins to be replicated in your body when the cells replicate. Right. That's right. So it gets inside the cell membrane, and then when the cell, uh, the, the mitochondria split. The whole cell splits. The, the whole cell splits. Then that thing they put in replicates, mm -hmm. and, and it leads to better muscle strength and better... Uh, Endurance. It depends on which cells you're infecting. Right. It depends on which genetics you put in. I mean, you could literally treat any genetic problem or genetic frailty. So they were looking this. at this. They were looking at muscles. For muscle they were looking at muscle for strength. MS problem. Right. And so that would help. But MS has to do with the neuromuscular junction. Uh -huh. So for MS, that's not just the muscle. It's really the nerve that leads to the muscle. Okay. And it's an autoimmune response on the nerve. The nerve can't innervate the uh, motor, the the motor the nerves make the can't make the muscle move. Work. So, so it atrophies. It atrophies. It doesn't stimulate it. All right. So that would be more of a virus that would be working on the nerve. Okay. And the covering of the nerve, the sheath that the goes myelin. over the mm -hmm. nerve. So that would that would be what they were talking about for this. But they were so also they're, using they're it for to... muscle, but muscle strength. To regain the muscles after MS has, has lost them. Wow, and that would be the real reason so for medical hope, hope to be able to stop the deterioration from MS mm -hmm. and then even recover some capacity. Yes, awesome. And we, you know, I deal with MS a lot because 
autoimmune disorders respond to testosterone on, like I said, this is cellular level, mm -hmm. and and I'm working on an organ organ system level, and uh, which is is it it's like layers in the body, you know, you that organ systems are big, the cells small, the cells are all affected right. by the testosterone, but I'm I'm I have the bigger picture, and I'm not dealing with changing DNA, but we usually stop the autoimmune response with the testosterone. So mm -hmm. we stop the attack, but we can't regain the muscle. Right. So this would be regaining the muscle and healing the nerves. So with, with replacing the testosterone, with the viral you, you infection. Can, you can delay the deterioration, the further deterioration, mm -hmm. but you can't recover. Right. I can't fix it. But this would okay. be how you fi how you would fix it. And this is not out there right. yet. This no. is very much in Still the early research. Days. That's why I don't know nearly as much as I could know well, about it. Yeah, because the article, it's, they, the article is. They were talking about Schwarzenegger rats. They developed <laughs> in I the lab know. rats that were like super muscular, and that's what they called mm -hmm. them, Schwarzenegger rats. Uh, oh, he should be so proud. I'm sure he was. <laughs> uh, but they're trying to find the operative mechanisms and, and understand what's happening, and then they move up the chain. And I mean, traditionally, they mm -hmm. do. They start with laboratory rats. By the way, the leading cause of death among laboratory rats is research. Uh, and, and when they know what they're doing with that, they move to larger animals, more complex animals, mm -hmm. and they work their way up to eventually getting Primates. permission to try it on people. And then people. Yeah. But so. in this case, they would have a lot of people volunteering because they're desperate. Absolutely. They always do. And, and they always do. They take those populations for trial experiments and you know, there's always a hurry. Let's let's get it done because you could save lives today or quality of life today. So this part's the future. Yeah. This part's not available currently, and I don't want anyone to have false hope. So, that. so if you want to read the article yourself, the article is in the August issue of Men's Journal. It's called "Building the New Super Athlete." And August what's, 2013. Of 2013, yeah, last August, <laughs> uh, and the. The article focuses on some of the new things that are being tried and the way that people are experimenting and researching. And it also focuses on the question of the regulatory systems, both the federal system for food and drug and the sports regulations. Mm -hmm. and, and those are separate discussions uh, that, that need to be had by the appropriate bodies. But just for the average consumer, it's just really exciting for me to read about the stuff that's being done and, and the way that people come to find these things and how that then it oozes out into the system at large and, and benefits people, which was never the intention in the first place to, right. to do. Applications, so creative applications it's just is, amazing. is the business or is the art of medicine. Yeah. And so, Hopefully you'll find it useful, and once again, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.